have all the good men gone? And where are all the guys? Yeah! Where's the streetwise Hercules to fight? Javert! Do not forget my name! Do not forget me! Two, four, six, four. This can't hold their arsenic. He had it coming. He had it coming. He only had himself to blame. If you'd have been there, if you'd have seen it, I bet you you won. Me now that tweet and told me I was bad. But then one day I learned a word to sight me I can know. The, the biggest, biggest word you ever heard, heard and this is how it goes. Oh. Popular. You're gonna be popular. I'll teach you the proper poise when you talk to boys. Little ways to flirt and clowns. Ooh, I'll show you what shoes to wear, how to fix your hair. Everything that really counts to be be a little bit naughty. Just can't find it. Nothing is harder than learning a friend isn't real. A friend sends notes back and forth all day and doesn't care that you. Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious, if you say it loud enough, you'll always sound serious. Serious. The best future attorney. You want the moon and sky? Then take it, don't be shy. Baby, that's why you and I should break up. To my personal circle of hell. It has not worked out well. And I worry, what if I stand out for it? I worry, what can I possibly do when I grow up? When I grow up, when I grow up, when I grow up, I will be on my own. Pretending he's so good. Ah, oh, let's give the boy a hand. Let's control my baby. You know you gotta understand. Oh, maybe he's no Romeo. He's my loving one that show. There, right there. Look at that tan, well tinted skin. Look at the killer shape he's in. Look at that slightly stubbly chin. Oh, please, he's. Master of 
the house, doling out the charm, ready with a handshake and an open palm. Tails a saucy tail, creates a little stir. Customers appreciate the one song, glory. One song before I go, glory. One song to leave behind. simply a game for rich young boys to play the colors of the world are changing day by day bread the blood of angry men tea a drink with jam and bread black the dark of ages past that will bring us back to Kids, time for bed. <laughs> Come on, I'll tuck you in, in a little bit. Oh, hi. Welcome. You're just in time for the party. Would you like a cheese puff? Hello. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm having a dinner party and I seem to run out of coffee. You can be anything you want to be there. There's excitement in the air for you and me there. Fancy free there. Take your family there, but you've got to be there. Yeah. You just got to be there. You'll feel free there. You'll be what you want to be. See what you want to see. Seven holes the key there. Be there. It's nearly six o'clock. Pack up and piss off. Good Hello. evening. Welcome to the Wigan Slingback. Back. Welcome the Avenue. Welcome. It's a theatre night, showbiz yes, night. Yes, it is. Dun, 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 dun. So I've gone all fussy on your ass. Welcome. Uh, we're not going to be that show busy, are we? We nah. might. Be, we might be a bit. Hopefully you can hear us. Papa, can you hear us? I'm going to come out with show tunes all night. I hopefully think. you can see us. Um, hopefully you can see Pegatina. You can see her bum. Come with the camera. Yeah, see if we can get her. There, there she is. is. So You'll be pleased to know pop that Pe Peggy is a lot better, isn't she? Yeah, like she's uh, the pills have sorted out her problems. And uh, we didn't have to take her in for a scan today. Um, so that's good. And we've also um, changed vets. Yeah, we're moving her to another vet. Um, the last vet was lovely. They were lovely, lovely people. Really far away. And um, I had to I had to carry Peggy there last yeah. time because she wouldn't walk. Because uh, she didn't like going. So she's stubborn. She just stands. I know she says, "I'm like, I know I'm going. I'm not going. To, I don't want to go there." And also, when Jane was once away, I had to try and organise a taxi to take me to the vet. And the tax company were really iffy and, and crappy about it. Like, oh well, we'll have to find somebody who's willing to have a dog in their car. And I thought, this isn't good. And we don't so drive. we've moved her to a vet that's just round corner. Um, and we didn't go there originally because we read bad reviews of it online when we first moved to Scarborough. But our mates, Stephen and Martin, take Lily, their dog, there and say it's amazing. It's lovely. It's changed as well, apparently. It's a lot, a lot better than it was. Right, there are requests to see my T-shirt. So, stand up. Oh, do the people know about it? I think they've just seen the top. There's a lovely present sent to us, wasn't it? Yeah, so... By a lovely 
Cahoon and Ludlow. Cahoon and bloody Ludlow sent me this from Belfast. For Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah, so if anyone ever wants to send us little gifts, we do love to receive them. Um, and I got a lovely picture from Because no one tips us anymore. <laughs> I got a lovely fo- picture of a print of all the cast of Coronation Street. Uh, it looked a bit like The Last Supper. In the 90s, because it had Angie Freeman in it. Yeah. Um, it's a lovely long print in it, and they sent me that for yes. Christmas. And, and we- it's glass, and... Came in one piece. It did, and we're thinking we might even hang it in the house of S and M. So the house of S and M are going to have this big picture wall with lots of camp photos on it. We're going to uh, be on it. We're going to be on it, but we think we might put the uh, Last Supper of Coronation Street there from oh, lovely Cahoon and Ludlow. Right, let's have a look. Let's have a look who is in tonight. A little roll call. Uh, it is Tracy Thirty is here, and it's her last day as a thirty-five-year-old, which means Tracy Thirty, you can get the full Scylla experience. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday! If you love Scylla, that was amazing. If you're not so keen, that's a bit, a bit torturous. She gets closer and closer and closer. Happy birthday, Tracy 30, for tomorrow. Baby, I can't remember what I was doing when I was 35. And turning 55 today is... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward, a.k.a. Here She Is. She's must be out and about sipping champagne. She's, she's gadding about. She won't with, be in tonight, I think. With she's Dex, Dexter. Birthday. Well, happy birthday, darling. Happy birthday to Timmy, um, who watches us on Catch Up. Uh, Pauline Grant is here. Hello, Pauline. Uh, Lee bloody Ludlow. Well, I'd and love Cahoon. to talk about you, darling. Thank you to both of you for my Prezi and Alan's Prezi. Uh, Andrew Chapman is here, but you might be popping in and out. He's at work. He's on a sneaky break. Hello, Andrew. Loads of people <laughs> seem to arrive and say, going, well, I'm not staying tonight. Not bye. Staying, bye. <laughs> just, you don't have to explain yourself. You don't even have to say that, do they, really? Can you imagine if we were a pub and they just popped in? Hello, I'm not staying. Bye. Yeah, but that would be nice. Popped in, used, used the loo and frigged off. That's all right. We don't mind, do we? Like Maggie Beer. Yeah. Uh, David Moore is here. Hello, David. BG Bear is in. Yoo-hoo. The Duchess is here. The Duchess hasn't been around for a bit, has she? No. I know the Duchess. I like the cut of your jib. Ross Morgan is here. Ross Morgan's not been around for a while. Ross says, I've been off here for four weeks due to shift work, but I'm happy to be back on tonight. Mind you, you're looking to have us because you're, you're normally away, aren't you? I'm normally away as well. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Um, rolling through names. Coral Daft is here. Coral. Coral. Cheers. James on the Jam Shed. I'm on the Jam Shed tonight. Um, uh, Ross Morgan's birthday was on the 16th. Happy birthday to you. He said, we didn't sing happy birthday because we didn't have a show on because we were away. So that is for you, Ross. Happy birthday. I hope you had a lovely day. Um, who else? Paul McFarlane is here, but he's whispering tonight. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Brammy D's in, the Bramleys. That's Darren and Rebecca. I don't know if they're in France. I think they're lost in France. He was lost in France. What's the start of that girl? No, what's the weird Ooh bit? Ooh la 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 dance. Ooh la 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 I'm dancing. Uh, let's have rolling through the names. Nibbles and Bubbles are here. They're in they're not in, suck at sunny Cornwall. Are they tuned in on their holiday? Yeah. Hello, guys. They're uh, off in on holiday in Cornwall. But um, I think they've got bad weather. Oh, no. We've got lovely weather here. <laughs> we haven't. Well, Maggie, Maggie Boggs said, because she's staying at their house. Yeah, Maggie Boggs at yours. She's looking after everything. Uh, Steam Rocks is here. Hi, Steam Rocks. Will Venus is in. Hiya. Uh, Will Venus ASMR. 
Uh, Nibbles and Bubbles say they've just been on fizzy bubbles in the hot tub. Ooh. Ooh. Drinking fizzy bubbles or creating, or creating them. <laughs> Um, Neil Sandwell is in. Hello, my darling. That means the Sandwells. I don't know which Sandwells are there. Let us know, Neil, who's in with you. Uh, let me roll through these names. Joel Hazeldean is here. Hi, Joel. Hi, Joel. Who's leaving who? I saw another Hazeldean song the other day. I meant to remember it for you, Joel, but I've completely forgotten it. Uh, Scylla Black is in. Surprise, there surprise. She is. Scylla's here. Lily Law is here. Hello, Lily. Um running through the names running through the name running through the names running through the names all the things you said all the things you said MP is here hello MP what was I just singing then I don't know is it Tartu you're the oh is it not even a musical no if I was going to do a musical about running um, I can't think of one now my musical theatre brain's gone gone numb uh, Mr Venus is in as well hiya Hi, Mr, Mr Venus, Venus. <laughs> said that in unison Marcia Morsi's in Marcia and Hi, Ewan Marcia, are here Ewan. Pip is in Shalom our friend Papa can you hear us Papa can you see us um, Stuart Bloody Cahoon is Stuart Bloody in Cahoon um, Josh Sadler is in Hi Josh Feed Me Seymour is here Hello Feed Me Seymour um, Feed Me Seymour Feed Me on You can do it uh, anyone else? Anyone else? My dad is in, so that means my mum's in as well. Hello, you two. Um, I think that might be everyone who's saying hello. Gareth in Porto is in. Ola Gareth. Uh, Seven Network is in over here, over there as well. I think John Morissette is here. Hello, John Morissette. Archie Diggins is in. Oh, Archie Diggins. Archie Diggins says hello from Fresh Snow on the Hills Highlands. Ooh. We didn't know Archie Dickens was Scottish, did we? No, I thought he was like East End of London with Oliver. Archie Dickens will be like Brigadoon now. Go home, go home, go home to Archie Dickens. Uh, <laughs> Gareth says she's glad to hear Penny is better. Gareth, she's called Peggy, as in Peggy Mitchell. But Penny oh, Penny's is... Penny's a sweet name for her, yeah. isn't it? When she's like demure. <laughs> Peggy's when she's like, get out of my pub. Diangela's here. Hello, Diangela. Um... Just rolled past everyone then, so I missed a load of names. Um, oh, oh, that's back with back, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I'll see if I've got any missed anyone. Darren Small's here. Dazzle and Brizzle, lovely to see you, Dazzle. David Moore, I think I've said David Moore. Um, oh, actually, again. I'm rolling through. John Morissette says in the House of Games video when Alan wears the pink dress and blonde wig, it reminds me of Barbara Cartland. Funny you should say that, John Morissette, because that's exactly who he's dressed up as. Um, and he's got low swinging boobs, just like Babs herself. Um, Ross Morgan, we've just said happy birthday to you, Pip. I think we've just, I just sung to you, Pip, so I know you know that you're here. Uh, I think that's about it. Speak Wes Davis, Martin Sullivan, hello, duckies, he says. Um, BG Bear. Is saying, oh, he's saying he's misses his four pugs and three shih tzus, but they've all got old and they've all gone to live with Scylla over the Rainbow oh, Bridge. The um, Martin Sullivan says, I was thinking tattoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and Ross Morgan also says that song was tattoo. <laughs> Do you remember tattoo? Yeah, yeah. They were like sort of teenage Russian lesbians, yeah. but they only pretended to be lesbian to get in the charts. And there's um, Tattoo Baby. Tattoo Babies from um, Ink Master. Right, over on this side of the world. Uh, we have the lovely Sarah Simpson. She's at the bar buying everybody drinks. And she hopes we're all well, including Peggy. Uh, lovely Mark Monday and Pearson. He's, I think he's got a little, look, look, look a little caravan. Is he in the caravan? No, he's got one. I think he's had a caravan always, hasn't and, he? And um, it looks like, imagine one of those in Carry On Camping. <laughs> Is that so well, old-fashioned? Dirty... Yeah, yeah. Dirty scrubbers. The old-fashioned the old look. It looks like lovely. Like bubble ones. I wanted one of those in the back garden as a little, like, um, office. They're going to go around the country, I think, and Rick, Ricky and the, and, the, and the pets. Can't get them down our um, game. Alex Clark is at work, um, but he's looking at us on monitor number one. And work is on monitor, monitor two. two. I, like that, I like that order. Hierarchy. Uh, Stephen Lodge says he's dipping in and dipping out, so I think he might have gone. He's got a little picture of Erica Davidson, though, looking a bit fierce. Lovely Joel William Hazeldean's popped over here to say hello to the snug people. Mark Hall, I think Mark's Hall on, on his own with his spaghetti hoops. Lovely Bethan Williams. 
And our lovely Nigel and Neil from Dawlish. Yeah, N- Nigel and Neil aren't far from Shari and Chris. Hello, boys. I hope, you, I, hope it's, I hope you're having a lovely time down there. Go and rescue Shari and Chris from those Cornish winds. Uh, lovely Martin Garton. Spence has yeah. made an appearance. Yeah, We've not so. seen much of Martin since he um, opened oh. a hotel. Yes, it's lovely to see you, darling. We've got Angela Willis. Uh, J- oh, Jason Rigby, our receptionist. Um, I think she just popped the kettle on, didn't she? She popped the kettle on. Doing a bit of filing. Spencer Carter, our lovely chum on the radio. Oh, 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 on the radio. And our, our lovely friend Paul's popped over to speak to everybody in the snogging. Is there any theatre shows or musical theatre shows about radio? I think, actually, uh, Annie and Peppa and Molly go along and go... Do, 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 you're never fully, fully dressed, dressed without, without a smile. smile. Never fully dressed without a smile. Oh, lovely. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of radio, um, Helen Beats popped in to say hello and goodbye to. Oh, she's, she's off to that there London. She's off to, to, to Big, big Mist. To Be see careful family. in that there London, Helen Beats. Um, we've also got Katie Fraser has popped in. Oh, Jason Darcy's over on this side. Um, lovely Nibbles and his Ollie Bob's. Oh, it's lovely to pop in. Look. Is it on the holiday? It is. Um, uh, I think that might be everyone. Jill, Jill Barron. Barron. Ah, she's popped in. She's stuck in there, little Jill. Smock Bob. <laughs> you said he met Mr. Spoon. Who's Mr. Spoon? Mr. Spoon's a puppet from oh. Button Moon. Oh, hey. oh, yeah, of course he is. I think she's being silly. Naomi McBride. Hello, darlings. Uh, Smock Bob. David Moore. Is David Moore from over there? Lucy Braithwaite? Uh, Lucy Braithwaite. Carrie Louise, Kay Lou. And I think that is everyone. And we missed a lot of comments, but good to see everyone here. So, Martin Gotten Spence says, I shall be marking myself as unavailable on the Wednesday rotor from now on. Quiz night at the hotel can cope without my glamorous assistant appearance. Oh, is it quiz night tonight, Martin? You should go to quiz night. Oh, you do quiz night, Send us any... Cheeky rounds, so we can steal them for our quiz night, which is next Friday. It is, our isn't quiz it? Night, yeah. I've only written one round. Jason, Brett, we missed you, darling. How did we miss you? Have we been on holiday? No. Did we? Just, we just missed you. Oh, the, there he is. It's all sweeping by, isn't it? For some we reason. missed Jamie Wright as well. We missed a oh, load Jamie of little Wright. comments. So Jamie, Jamie Wright, Wright and Jason Brett. We missed the pair of you. Well, we're Sorry. all here now. We're all we're all in the in the Wigan sling back, having a good time. The is that a really on. is that a really like dull ten minutes when we just read through your no, names? No, it isn't. <laughs> Unlike some vloggers, we appreciate our our punters. I know, but I don't know if it's if you just get bored with us just Do you scrolling get bored through. Doing it? A little bit. Oh, sh- sh- don't you jump shut sure up. I think it's nice to say hello to everybody. But it's World Theatre Day, so we're here to talk about theatre. So, theatre can come in many, many forms. Theatre can take From place. From the Punch and Judy show. <laughs> in the round, in the proscenium arch, or just simply on the street. <laughs> Even some finger puppets. That's theatre. Um, what's your first experience of theatre? Let us know what your first experience of theatre was, like the first trip. Maybe performing or maybe watching. What was your first experience of theatre? Watching or taking part. Uh, what's like your first experience of theatre? What's your first theatre memory? Well, it'll be, I'm, I have to go way back to um, nativity at school, really. Does that count? It does, but we've chit chatted about nativity. So mm. What about when uh, you? It will be when I first proper did a proper play. No, talk about prospect. when you went to see like a weird. You went into a dark room. Oh, um, this because Jamie said it was theatre day on Wednesday. Um, think back to when you first actually went into a theatre, and I thought I thought. Yeah, there's that. Oh, then there's that. Oh, and I kept going back. And I remember it was Christmas and our class was taken on on um, a county council bus. <laughs> it wasn't a coach. It wasn't a posh like coach. A, like a window liquor bus. Yeah, it might be blue or yellow. <laughs> and we, had, we ended up in this theatre somewhere. It was like a dark room. And we all, there was other, other schools there as well. But there weren't many, many classes. Why did you not go on a proper coach or a bus? Because they were tight. Okay. <laughs> Um, and we saw this weird clown show. And it was all, <laughs> Do you not remember it? Yeah, he was doing the, the ring thing and his rabbits were coming out of hats. And 
That's um, a magician, not a clown. Well, it was in the theatre, so it was a show <laughs> with music and an actor. Now, I went to, we went to Panto every year, but we did go to the circus. We went to the circus in Weymouth. You had circus and pantos. I think circus was more of a summer trip for the Maudsley clan. So we went to uh, the circus in Weymouth near Mum's mum and dad. And I wanted to see elephants. Mm. I called them wellephants. Um, And apparently I loved, like, loved, loved, loved the clowns. I was bonkers for the clowns. I think I laughed loads. Um... I think there was a midget clown and I think I found him the funniest mm. out of the clowns. I'd have only been... Mum, Dad, hit me up with an age. How old would I have been when I went to see Wellifants? And Don't say 12 or something. Don't embarrass me now. I must have been little. So I remember that. But theatre, we used to go every Christmas to the Liverpool Everyman Theatre, which was kind of like a funky theatre. It's the one where Julie Walters started and it, loads of like Liverpool kind of people started Alan Rickman started there it was a really big like rep theatre and their panto every year was a rock and roll panto with all the actors playing the band as well playing yeah. music and one of their pantos I think became Return to the Forbidden Planet oh, the wow. musical but it was that kind of vibe so I, that's what I remember I remember that kind of sort of rock concerty panto that was my early memories dad said I would have been four or five probably hmm uh, some memories, theatre memories here. Brammies, Bramley say it will be Panto that they remember. Um, Tracy Thirty Love Phantom of the Opera was Sarah Brightman. Uh, Coral Daft remember seeing Danny LaRue in Panto. Mm. Stu Bryce has popped in, says hello. Hello, Stu Bryce. Um, MP went to see Panto with John Inman in Wolverhampton and he said our family's name and made us wave as there were 12 of us. Oh. That would have been giddy. Um... Josh Sadler, my mam used to work for Granada in the shops, which used to do the TV rentals. Every year they would arrange for all the kids of the staff to go to Newcastle's Theatre Royal for Panto. Great oh, memories. Very nice of them, wasn't it? Um, Neil Sandwell. Henry was taken to see a professional production of Wizard of Oz age four. The Wicked Witch asked where her sister was, and Henry shouted, She's under that shed. <laughs> Neil then adds, It wasn't a panto. Uh, oh. Pip, West Side Story at the Batley Lawrence Theatre with junior school. I can remember being so loud and quite out of control. Oh, poor little delicate Pip. Can you imagine him sat there with his little pearl necklace on on his little school uniform? He might want them little sweet ones on. He made it sweet. Angry with those angry, noisy Jetson sharks. Um, Let's have a look over here, because we always miss out these memories. Uh... Uh, Mark says, Panto with the Manor Operatic Society. Which he's written us a message about. I'll try and find that to read. But if not, it's in the comments on the post Uh, today. Nibble says, um, proper theatre experience as an actor, playing a mole. Uh, Not a mole. In Wind of the Willows. Mole's like one of the main roles. Mole. You you did put baby M. (laughs) Capital M, Ole. Unless you were just one of Mole's family. In Wind and Willows. Carrie Louise Kalu. There we go. She said she doesn't have a first memory, don't really remember it, but just covered the programme. I think she's on about... Oh, so her first memory, she only remembered where she would look at sort in three boxes and found a programme for the recruiting officer at the... She's written She Festival. We know what you mean. Theatre. She'd been about 15. Stephen Lodge says, well, Stephen Lodge, who popped in and said, I'm not staying... She's still here. Says, will Alan ever do a parody of the Shake and Vac advert? It could star Peggy as the smells from your pet's dog. Well, I could do it, but I think... Um, <laughs> I think he could. I because he's got it. good hips, Stephen. <laughs> We'd want Alan to be like... I'd be like more Sherry like, making the stenches. No, I'd be more like... Um, what's her face? You'd be the Febreze family. No, I'd be what's her face? Tur- Amy Turtle. <laughs> um... Uh, we're missing a few comments. Let's have a look. Lucy Braithwaite. We were always taken to the Octagon in Bolton. In Bolton. Octagon in Bolton. Uh, lots of Corrie actors to spot. Um, Do you thought Nigel? Neil. Said? There we go. You can read Nigel. Neil said he sat in front of the ro- if he sat in the front row to watch Beatrix Potter, the ballet, <laughs> and was transfixed by the animal's bulges. <laughs> Neil, you don't have to touch. Oh, Neil, how old were you? <laughs> Neil, I can imagine 
imagine Nigel doing it. <laughs> um, I uh, no wonder he likes working at the zoo. <laughs> I love the Beatrix Potter Ballet, the movie, but I was such a little woofter. Um, Feed me Seymour. Whenever I'm sad, I imagine a clown washing a car and goes to throw a bucket of water to wash it and confetti blood to the car. (laughs) Does it cheer you up, I hope? Uh, BG Bear's uh, early memory. Ed Stewart and Terry Scott in Mother Goose at Wimbledon Theatre. Alex Johnson. I remember seeing Cinderella with Les Dennis and Dustin G. And the next day in the Sunday papers, it said Dustin died backstage the night before. It was was, was shocking when he died. Oh, that was in um, Southport, wasn't it, Alex? They were they were big news, weren't they? Uh, Darren saw Sooty Sweep and Sue in the Hazlitt Theatre at the age of eight. Um, It's funny that you know you think about it that all our memories of theatre is back when we were kids, weren't they? Well, we have lots of adult memories, but. No, but, you know, when you sort of think the first time you sat in an auditorium. Um, um, Neil was 17. <laughs> when he was obsessed with those bulges. <laughs> what's, what's well, I bet Miss Tiggy Winkle had a bulge, because she'd have been played by a bloke. She'd have a frock on an apron when she coming up. She mostly did a little spin, you could get a glimpse. And then we all like, oh. Uh, Beth and Williams, first <laughs> musical with Dirty Dancing in 2011. I'd seen it three times and enjoyed it. But I would love to see Cats and Wicked. 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 <laughs> uh, Wicked's coming out of the film this uh, mm. this year. Right, let's have a look at some of you. Um, and Alan's going to have a look. Oh, yeah, because I don't see the photos. Let's go to Jamie. Right, oh. this is a Scout Jamboree show. Um, and we're looking at this little person. In the front? In orange. The orange dress. Oh, the orange dress. Now, the orange dress um, apparently smelt of B.O., <laughs> And must. <laughs> like dust and BO, but not this person's. I think this is American. Am I right? No, it's a Cub Scout jamboree. Oh. So remember, these will all be boys. Oh, oh, it's a boy in a dress. Yeah. Okay. Uh, BG Bear! I've got to say BG Bear before you. <laughs> because I know that BG would be very happy wearing a dress. Look at the. Unlike oh. the one that's wearing the um, let me see pink nighty. Let me see if I can bring that one. Yeah, let's see this one. Look. That scout's not really enjoying it. <laughs> but I must I must say I'm impressed with that nighty. I know, BG Bear, were well, you livid you didn't get that nighty? Um so talking of BG Bear, we then have Is BG Bear again? BG Bear again. Now this was In a, a dress again. I think this was a school play about Anne Boleyn and Henry the Eighth. Is he in that thing at the end? BG Bear played Anne Boleyn's uh maid in waiting, but said had the better dress than Anne Boleyn. BG I'm I'm very impressed because this isn't the first time that he's played women, is it, on stage? No, he played a milkmaid, didn't he, on a yeah. big float. <laughs> so I think he's like he's the one to go for. They wanted um, a boy in drag, aren't they? bg has got like that little bowl heavy fringe. I had the same hair. What's that little phrase from um, um, the film with um, Ghost Man in it? What's his name? Patrick Swiss. Yeah, where he's in drag. And he goes, you're a little little girl in drag. What's that? Just a, I think just a little Latino girl in drag. So we should call BG Bear the little... We can't. It's, I think it's racist now oh, to say it? little Latino girl No, but changing drag. Latino to... Where's he from? BG Bear didn't explain this photo, but it just popped through in the crop. Not BG Bear again. No, that's Bonnie to Langford. Oh. <laughs> that's Bonnie Langford being mobbed. I'm more impressed with uh, Marge Proops. Just behind her. <laughs> I knew you would be. <laughs> Is that Bonnie's um, agent? She looks like she's doing the Marge Proop sort of pen hold as yeah. well. Uh, Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward has popped in and popped out, I think, and says, if I don't get a syllogram, I'll be livid. You've had, you've had, you had the people on the stairs, doll. You've had the um, happy birthday you have to, to rewind you. rewind and have a look. Um, so, Bonnie Langford's there. Um, not sure what Bonnie's doing, but she is being mobbed um, for autographs from all the Cub Scouts, I think. Um, and then finally, another BG bear we have here. Ah, oh, he looks a little bit pink, like pink grot bags. Yeah, or a little bit like she's he's in the stump family. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what that photo was. BG bear, I did make Is notes it, um, on them all, and I forgot. No, it's just a little show with his mate. Uh, then we have Panto starring Lydia Lucy. X-Factors. From X Factor as the fairy godmother. Is that Pete from EastEnders? I don't remember Lydia Lucy. Is that Pete from EastEnders? Yes. Oh, yeah. TV's EastEnders Peter Dean as Baron Hardup. 
and the X Factor boy band Times Red's Luke White. Right. So quite convoluted there. But if we go yeah. down here, we have also Eleanor Beth Carter as Cinderella. Yeah. Clues in the name. Yeah. Samuel Awosuga as Dandini. Robert Walters as Buttons. Eleanor Beth Carter, I think, is the daughter of... Spencer Carter. Oh! Who is playing... He's playing one of the Ugly Sisters. Frutella. <laughs> Frutella, Frutella the sweets. Yeah. Frutella and Nutella, the ugly sisters. Oh. So they're Spencer with the red hair, I think. And is it the Brookside Theatre? The Brookside Theatre. Um, so that's our little Spencer Carter in Panto. Now, not strictly on stage, not a theatre memory, but... Oh, I know. I've what seen is it. she oh, getting up to? Is she... Pulls this one every time. Every time we um, have a photo call, <laughs> it's our receptionist, isn't it? This is our reception. This is how she strolls into work most most Monday mornings, doing the walk of shame. Yeah, with a with a fag packet stuck in her knickers. Yeah, with a Marlborough stuck in a skirt, in a little um, pretty woman outfit. I don't know what she'd be doing <laughs> in that room, but it doesn't look. Um... Look at her. Oh, look at her there. She's pulled. Yeah. <laughs> No wonder she's on our reception, eh? The fags are still there as well. <laughs> the fags are dropping. Uh, Spencer Carter says he played Nutella, not Fruitella. Um, Nutella's even funnier. <laughs> right, another photo coming up. Uh, the pink wig for BG Bear was part of an anti-apartheid benefit gig oh. and he played one of the disco dollies. Oh, okay. Right, let's have a look. Next photo. Is that Alex? That is... Is that our, our tall boy, Alex? Our lovely Welsh boy, Alex Clark. Is he singing? And he's singing on stage. Alex, I didn't think he could sing. So he's giving a recital. Um, he's emoting to what looks like a couple of empty front row seats. Oh, don't say I'm wondering that. if they had little, like, waiting for Guffman little reserved signs on. I wonder like if a producer. Sing now, do you? Yeah, I said to Mark, I didn't know. I said I'd love that. And I've got, Mark has supplied us with uh, the programme. And you see Stephen Allen. Stephen Allen comes on first and does all these kind of yeah. hits. You want to imagine? Oh, whistle, yeah. Whistle Down the Wind. And then yeah, spells yeah. Whistle Down the Wind wrongly, Alex. Yeah, get yeah. that spell check going. Yeah. Bit of Hush of My Mountain. So this is all like a bit popular. Mr. Clark comes on. And we have some proper music. Vaughan Williams... Uh, three saltwater ballads, like proper ones. And then I misread the last song as being Mariah, Mariah Carey. Carey. <laughs> oh, I want to hear him I'd sing. I'd love to hear him do a bit of Mariah Carey. Can you imagine? I don't want a lot for Christmas. Christmas. All I want is spaghetti. Ooh. I hope you have recordings, otherwise we're going to make you sing to us next time we see you. Right, let's have a look. We've got uh, another picture coming up here, and it's a big picture of a big cast. Oh, I can see it. I've just spotted. Have you spotted already? Yep, yeah, right in front of me is Gabby Chassis. Gabrielle Chassé is there with uh, uh, the... I was about to say, it's because of the moustache. White, with the all white. I, I was going to say, it's because of the moustache, but they've all got moustaches. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that is Gabby in, I think, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, um, which is a musical. I think <gasps> Betty Buckley was I love in the her musical. in the back in the, in the Red Moo Moo. <laughs> <laughs> she looks fun. Do you think she's in it or do you think she's crew and she's just popping along she for the costume. photo? Yeah, I think she's something like that. Um, Although she, we think oh, there some, might be someone some blacked some... up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think we've just spotted someone blacked up behind you there, Gabby. But that was back in the day, wasn't it? And do you think this person next to Gabby is blacked up or just no, he's, just tanned? He's, he's, he's tanned, isn't he? Um, Gabby said he also was in a production of Christmas Carol and during one of the numbers he slipped over and fell on his ass, and then from then on his move was called the two-step chasse. Um, oh, and also, can we, can, we, can we close down the little pooch? Oh yeah, little little stage dog. Oh no! And look at her with that pink dress on. Look at the. It's like um the the ninety that was in the <laughs> BG, BG, BG Bear Scout Jamboree. <laughs> uh, let's oh. have a look. Next one. Okay, who's this and what are they in? That's Cahoon. No. Is it not Stu Cahoon? No. Is it the one with the patch on? The one at the front with the patch on. 
And what's the play? Can you guess the play well, first it's a of all? Low, isn't it? Yeah. This person, Sam, Mr. Sam, Sam this well. person's granddad is that person. Oh, it's little little Henry. It's little Lord Henry. It's Doctor Henry, medicine woman, playing a member of the Gestapo in the hilarious Alo Alo. Well, in the middle, does it look like Stuart Cahoon? <laughs> it does look a bit good. Stuart has an adder. <laughs> um, so that's little Lord Henry in Alo Alo, and then. That's Henry again. Little Lord Henry looking very handsome. You can see why they're giving him that part, can't you? As um, Prince Charming. Yeah. You wouldn't think that filth would come out of that boy's mouth, but my goodness, he shocked everyone at the bingo. And he's got a very deep voice, hasn't he? He's got a very deep voice. All right, lads. All right, lads. All right, Alan, all right, Jamie. How are you? I like these these dirty (laughs) eggs, lads. (laughs) Uh, so that's Little Lord Henry. Right, next. Pro- so name the performer and name the show. Can you go in a bit? It's a bit... Do you want me to go in here? No, I want to see the fizzle. <laughs> nice legs. Is it Neil? It's Neil Sandwell. Neil Sandwell as I live and breathe. In Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. I must say, it's a very good outfit and good makeup. I was I was gonna say something from Funny Girls. Do you know what I love that Neil's like <laughs> blacked out the rest of the cast. Oh, is that what he's highlight? Done? I think so, most probably. He's but got, I love it. He's got the stance right, hasn't he? Uh, Nibbles and Bubbles guessed it was Neil. Yeah, and Perinda guessed it was Neil. Looks fabulous, doesn't yeah. he? Spencer Carter one says someone someone's dug up Scylla. <laughs> <laughs> and Jason Darcy says, Neil Sandwell, your legs go all the way up. They do. Um, let's have a look. Next photo. <gasps> Who is no. this? Who is this and what's the show? It's Lady V. It's Lady V. Is can she you, serving the tea? Can you guess what the show is? Dinner Ladies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my right. Yeah, and what's she playing? Well, Bren. No. Oh, 12 slices of white. Right. Yeah, she's playing Professional Northern, a 12 slices of white. Um, yeah, so there we are, Lady they've B. Real, they've got a real shutter. Um, so which, I, which I think is just an Argos blind, isn't it? We'll stick to Lady V, and we've got... That's Lady V again. That's Lady V again. As she young, looked young. Very, she must be very young there. I don't know if she was very young. Lady V, or Neil, how old, how old is Lady V in this picture? I'd say 16, or even younger. No, I'd think even younger. I mean, she looks like she's about 13, 14. She's in Follies, which you wouldn't yeah. have guessed, would you? No, I was, I was going to say My Fair Lady or um, Lady V on Ice. Follies has got like weird, like ghosts that appear of the, the characters when they're younger, and she's one of those. Or Lady V on Ice. Um. <laughs> Little skates. <laughs> she could have skates on in yeah. this ensemble. Um, uh, just a few things coming in. Alex Johnson says, I was in Bugsy Malone in Ormskirk Civic Hall. Oh, Alex, it's gone. Did you re- did you delete? She retracted the. Oh, uh, they. I don't know if it's a she or a he. I think it might be a he. Retracted message. Um, Bramley's uh, Philippa Bramley, daughter of Darren and Rebecca, was in a musical society. She was in Hairspray, and in the blackout before the last number walk down, she knocked herself out on a speaker. And we were watching and thought it was odd that she didn't walk out. Now, as I was saying, Lady V on Ice, Stephen Lodge said he remembers being at junior school, and they were asked to suggest themes for um, a play for the special unit. And he said the towering inferno on ice. (laughs) Um, Lady Vanessa is 28 in that picture. You're joking. No. 28. Lady V. She looks, you do, you look like... um... She looks like 16 there, doesn't she? Yeah. Right, let's have a look. Another photo coming up now. Oh, I've seen this before. That's um, Shari and uh, Neil again, isn't it? Shari, a.k.a. Bubbles, and Neil, a.k.a. Sandwell with the Gams. I always say this, but I always say it's um, Casablanca. It's not, is it? No, I can't remember what the play was now. It is written down, but Shari, I think, was playing Neil's sugar sugar daddy? (laughs) Sugar mommy? Sugar mommy. Let me have a look. It's um, in the messages on my phone. Um, Shari was was Neil's rich sugar mommy. Oh. Look at Neil, look at Neil's eyebrows. Now that's a, acting for he has you. He's a look of a young Todd Carty. 
he does look a bit like Todd Carty. And he looks a bit like Todd Carty when he, you know, when he skates off, <laughs> talking of ice skates. Yeah. That sort of panicked look. Um, so, yeah, Neil and Shari have known each other since uh, they were at university, mm-hmm. since they were kids. Um, right, next picture. Who am I looking at? This person. Can you zoom in a bit? Uh, nibbles. It is. That's Chris Perinda. With a rapier. With a rapier. In a play that he said is a Stephen Akeborn play, directed by Stephen Akeborn. And I thought he would, he'd got it wrong. And I said, Stephen Akeborn? Do you mean Alan Akeborn? He said, no, it's Alan Akeborn's son. I didn't know he was a playwright. But um, yeah, that's a Stephen Akeborn play uh, with nibbles in it. Um, then we also have... That looks like a very... It looks a bit like a sort of deep theatre re- rehearsal, doesn't it? It is. It, there's a lot of theatre happening here. Um, is it banana drama? There's acting going on back there. There's acting going on there. There's acting going on here. Oh, he's got a bloody head. And there's scarfography going yeah. on there. Um, it is a play called Huff Puff, um, which, when pronounced around this part of the world, would be... Sorry? Huff Puff. Huff Puff. Um, Shari looks like she's um, a baddie, isn't it? It's written by Shari. I think it's a bit Death and the Maiden-y. Um, so I think they've captured him and they're torturing him, I think, because he's been a very bad boy. But then the question is, have they got it right? Is it him? Mm. Or are they bad? So I think that's what's going on. But it's called Huff Puff. And um, it's a play that Shari wrote um, specifically for her drama group, Drama Society. But it's really successful and it's performed all over the world now, this play. Um, but yeah, nice scarf work from Banana Drama there. Yeah. Uh, and Perinda being battered. I think this might be the play where Chris is, was left on stage in his pants. Do you remember? Yeah. And he was meant to get off, but he couldn't. <laughs> he likes wearing a white vest, doesn't he? He loves a white vest. We've seen photos of men in white vests before. <laughs> Uh, I think we've got another photo of Chris in a vest on here. No, we haven't. Let's have a look. Another photo of uh, Shari. Oh, she'll look happier there, does she? She's in a play there called Unbelievable with Did Banana Drama. That? No, it no. was written by their friend Paul. But yeah. What do you reckon's going on up here? Uh, um, she's been told off by somebody. <laughs> she's got a fascinator on, so she's, she's at a wedding or a funeral. I'm guessing. You wouldn't wear a fascinator to a funeral, would you? People wear hats and fascinators to a funeral. Oh, I don't know. But she's wearing red, so mostly not a funeral. Well, unless she's like the other woman. At the f- Do you know she has a, a look of Olivia Coleman there a bit, doesn't she? She does look a bit Olivia Coleman. Um, next photo. No, I know that because I watched this about two weeks ago. And that's um, Neil's play. Yes, a play Neil. that Neil wrote set in an old people's home. And um, Neil plays the um, well, the, the manager, the proprietor. Very, very funny, Neil. It was so funny. Very, very funny play. Neil's a bit Larry Grayson in that. Um, right, we've got some plays here with James Breton. Um, but I don't know what the plays are. We've got to try and guess what plays are. Well, so we've got, got to guess eye. what the play is. Suddenly Seymour. Yeah, well done. Well, it's... So, James, it's, um, Alan says it is um, um, Little Shop of Horrors. Just because the black eye and the blonde and um, I've got Seymour and must be the dentist or the director. Or Mushnick. Or Mushnick. Um, right, next play in the, the, Brett, the Brett, Brett, Brettology. That's Brett. Now, this could be sort of like, oh, what lovely war or something. See, I think it's either... Music Man or Sweet Charity? Because mm. it could be Sweet Charity with 76 trombone. Well, is behind that is that, charity? aren't they, um, is that, um, uh, there's a skyline. Oh, buildings, isn't it? There's like a sort of New York skyline. It could be the Music Man. I don't know the answers. So if, um, James or Jason is in, you could fill us in. But we think so far we've got Little Shop of Horrors, maybe the Music Man. Um, or what did you think? It's not a one of you are. Next one. Oh, that's must be some like um, company or something. Do you think? 
Yeah, I thought it could be chess because they're all in black and white. And chess is a little bit... Um, Everything out. Kind of, yeah. We just sing to the audience. Sing out. Uh, Brammy, Brammy wonders if that one in the outfits might have been Barnum, the Brambles. Oh, like a circus. Yeah. Um, sweet Charity. Yes. You were right. Yeah. Um, so with the, we're thinking chess for this one, but we might be wrong. Right, next one. Ooh, There's brother. James with his ta- flagon. Titanic the musical? <laughs> um, there is a Titanic the musical. Well, it's the, it's the goblets, isn't it? So it could be Oliver. Could be a bit of um pop art kind of chorus work. Could be. What's the person wearing behind? There's another. Pl- there's a musical called The Hired Man, and it could be from that, where they all sing like, Throw me a luck penny, do, lass. Um... Uh, the earlier photo was a musical medley. Oh, okay. <laughs> and they were singing We Doy from Miss Saigon. This one, we're not so sure about. What do you want to go for? Um, I'm not really good at musicals, as in. Do you think it's. A, could it be Oliver? Is Scarf. No. That's a bit modern for Oliver, isn't it? Maybe more grubbier. Not sure. Last one. I think the producers. Do you think? Yeah. What's she, she like? Well, the producers says that like make it gay song, and this just looks very gay. I don't know. We're not sure. We're not sure it's about a bit this Quentin one. Crisp to me, but bit Quentin Crispy. Is there any clues in the mirror? Well, she's um, she's definitely forties or thirties, isn't she? Yeah. So set in the forties. Producers. Not sure. We've not got answers yet. As soon as we get answers, we'll let you know. Final picture is... Oh, this is again James. But I, I wouldn't be able I'm to get King this George. one. Oh, do you think so? Is that a musical? Well, it might not be. It might be a play. I think it's a musical theatre oh, society. Musical? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, this one I wouldn't get. I wonder if it's like some sort of like Gilbert and sullivan kind of mm. operetta, like The Merry Widow or something like that. What's that one that I was in? About the mint thing. It's not that. Not that. What's that? The Thruppany Opera? Yeah. That's based on something, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, Brecht's. Brecht's. No, Brecht's Thruppany Opera is based on um, the Beggar's Opera. We don't know. We've we've failed you, James. Your messages aren't coming through if you're letting me know what they are, but they'll probably just spin they'll, up they'll in a come moment. In about half an hour. Right, we'll have a little ad break and we'll be right back after some adverts. Here to are. This side is about to come to an end, but I want you to be sure and flip over to the other side where the best of Hollywood beckons. Um, I'm going to freshen up a little bit, so I'll see you on the other side. Honey, why don't we get some more wine, uh, more hors d'oeuvres, more everything? Okay. Okay. These little town blues are melting away. We'll make a brand new start of it. Let's go on with the show. This is it, the real one. The ring. Hit it, Liza. If you want to go, go round with me, we're going to just take it, Cheetah. We're going to go round the ring, the ring. There's nothing to beat the ring, I think. If you want to go, go round with me, if you want to gain some ground with me. Pure happiness can be found with me. By going around and round and round and round and round and round and round the ring. <laughs> To track a serial killer... It puts the f***ing lotion in the basket. A rookie FBI agent must work with the darkest of minds. Dr. Lecter, may I speak with you? A census taker tried to test me once. I ate his... his liver with some fava beans and an <laughs> Ah! It's Silence, the musical. The unauthorized parody of The Silence of the Lambs. And the critics are raving. You laugh your butt off. That's nice. Subversively funny. Well, it gives us great f***ing reviews. For tickets, visit silencethemusical.com. 
Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, the new Stephen Sondheim Merrill Prince musical thriller starring Angela Lansbury. And Glenn Carey. More hot ice! What happened then? Well, that's the play, and he wouldn't want us to give it away. Not Sweeney. Not Sweeney Todd. The demon barber of Fleet Street. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bright new day on Broadway with Broadway's brightest new stars, David Cassidy, Petula Clark, and Sean Cassidy. Together, they've taken the stage and taken Broadway by storm in Blood Brothers. So make like David, Petula, and Sean. Make haste to Britain's most honored musical, Broadway's hottest hit. Make haste to the Music Box Theater for Blood Brothers. Oh, brand new day. Drop everything. See Gypsy, starring Tyne Daly. Gypsy, the Broadway musical at the St. James Theater. For tickets, call 212-246-0102. Oh, oh, Gorgeous, simply gorgeous. An absolutely thrilling musical. The dancing is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Unbelievable. The costumes, unbelievable. You know, it's it's really a great show. Bottom line, it's a great show. I loved it more than Disneyland. Fantastic. Cats, now and forever at the Winter Garden Theater. Call Telecharge for tickets. 212-239-6200. I love cats. Right, Evita. Stamp your feet and clap your hands. You've got a lot to celebrate. Seven Tony Awards, including Best Musical for Evita, Argentina's instant queen and overnight saint. And only a few seem to notice she simply seduced a country. at the Broadway Theater. Hi, I'm back. And so are you. You know, I feel as though I know you. Well, at least we share some of the same tastes. Oh, I'm sorry about the cheese puffs. I ran out. But I still have quiche. Apparently, reception says that she's ordered more cheese puffs. Um, she's put them on the stationery order, but they're just not coming through. But we've got plenty of quiche. We've got quiche. There's loads of quiche. Uh, Stephen Lodge just said that um, the... Uh, what's it called? It's the, what musical is it again? Blood Brothers. Blood Brothers. Reminds him of when um, one of his dogs might have done something in the corner. He goes, uh, tell me it's not poo. <laughs> Josh Sadler says, dearest Dame Angela Lansbury, such a class act in everything that she did. She popped up there in Sweeney Todd. Yeah. Um, Darren Bramley says, our former production manager, Billy Pond, worked the barber's chair in Sweeney Todd's London run. And he used to catch the tube home after the show every night covered in fake blood. Um, and Neil Sandwell says, we saw Dame Angela as Madame Arcati. She was amazing. And Darren Bramley says, Jennifer Saunders was also a good Madame Arcati. And Margaret Rutherford was the best. We've also got Dame Thora Hurd's popped in to tell us that her first stage appearance was at the age of two months in her mother's arms. She started young. And Stephen Lodge wonders, was that Robert Lindsay playing Citizen Smith in Evita? No, it was my uh, my crush, Mandy Patinkin. Um, Jason Brett said that um, the one with the cravat was yeah. a radio play on stage. Um, the Gilbert and Sullivan style one was The Slipper and the Rose. Your favourite musical. Which I hate. But he also said, and this is what is weird, because this didn't appear here. I had to check on Facebook. Um, the the hired man was the one with the flagons, which is what I said it was, didn't I? Oh, you did, yeah. Um, throw me a luck penny too, boy. A friend of mine was 
in the original Hired Man and won the Olivier Award for it. Uh, we've got some little questions. So, my questions are, I wrote them down on my phone so I don't forget them for me and Alan. Um, me favourite not. moment on stage as a performer? Mine would be when I was uh, studying and we did Richard the Third. And um, three, Dicky three, and um, my death. We had a sword play. Me and Michael. Sword play sounds a bit sexual. So we had a bit of sword play, and then um, they decided to hang me with my um, boar flag. Really? What's a boar flag? Wait, so that was his symbol. Oh, his flag! Though they hung you with your flag. Mm. <gasps> did you? What did you have to have a little hoist or something? I had a mountaineering a little harness underneath. Oh, underneath my, under a, we look like black. We look. We look like firemen. And we had like these black tunics on with buttons down here. Oh. And um, they hung me from this thing. I had to, um, I had to hang in this uh, mountaineering thing, <gasps> swinging. Oh, no. And uh, I kept, so, <laughs> for some reason, I, I just kept swinging like backwards and forwards like that. So I had to play dead for a very long time. And Michael had his wonderful speech as Richmond at the end. And he loved to milk it. Oh, no, while he you're swinging. He loved swingin', to take his time. Like, in pain. And these things were under my arm. These, uh, these like, weird, like, s- like, straps. It was painful, but it was a great, great, great scene. My Amdram Society did um, Jesus Christ Superstar. I wasn't in it. But it's the one where um, Diane pops up under... Um, no, it's the one where my friend Garth, when he was playing a leper rose up to get healed by Jesus but had gone too far and rose up inside Jesus's tunic so like was right by Jesus's little pants um and this is the same one where another lady went do you want a cup of tea Jesus and it's always made me laugh mm. um Judas Iscariot nearly hung himself and died in that oh no because he hang they hang he hangs himself in it um but it went wrong and um yeah he nearly died oh, no. and they had, to, they had to stop the show dramas um my favourite moment on stage was when I was in uh, Whistle Down the Wind, the musical. About and now, yeah, it was. I had this lovely, like, long kind of comedy speech at one point in the play, and I was right near the front of the audience, and I was kind of, um, you could, I could clearly see the audience. And Tony Slattery was on the front row, and yeah. I, we already knew Tony Slattery was on the front row because we'd clocked him. So at the interval, there'd been murmurs of Tony Slattery in. Anyway, I could see that I was making him absolutely piss himself with laughter. Aww. And I felt so proud because he was kind of someone I had a crush on, but also like a comedy hero. Yeah. This will be around the time of... Uh, whose line is it anyway? And I kind of do this big comedy moment and then storm off. And I stormed off. And um, I got a round of applause. Oh. And it was my yeah really proud moment. You played a comedy vicar in that, didn't you? Played a comedy vicar. Uh, the vicar does the vicar appear in the remake? Yeah, but he's like a sort of um, American preacher in the Lloyd Webber not, version. Not, not a comedy Lancashire. Not somebody like you. A little bit camp like me. Jenny once played me the video, you know, because they make videos of musicals when they, they, you buy them, don't you? Yeah. And all I remember is he, he sang um, a song and he, he, uh, a couple of lines were something about muttering and then... Muttering and guttering around. Right. <laughs> Lucinda Pink's popped up, who's a good friend of mine, and she says, do you want a cup of tea, Jesus? And she's laughing about it. Lucinda, it's the funniest thing ever because they were all meant to be like hippies and like it was meant to be like a party with Jesus and they're all meant to be like passing around a bong and stuff and sort of like getting drunk with Jesus and she, she sort of didn't know what to do. <laughs> so she went, do you want a cup of tea, Jesus? <laughs> um, Carlos Robbins laugh. Laugh. hello darling. He said he ended up on stage at a ladyboy show in Thailand. It was very classy, but he promises. Oh, dear um, me. I hope that's on one of your vlogs. <laughs> Get about dad. Get about dad. Um, worst moment on stage, and I think I know what your worst moment is, because I think it's a play that I directed. Oh. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any names. You can mention... Uh, no, you don't no, have to I'm mention, not mention names. names. But there's, there's this one performer who never got his entrances right. And it happened more often than not. And so, um, and it was one of those scenes where you need him to come in at a certain time because it's halfway through a sentence of mine, and he never ever came in on time. He missed his cue, and he didn't. He he, and he was a long time, wasn't it? Oh, and it happened night after night. It was like in the um, in the end, you I, know, in the dresser where they go. Oh, me thinks I heard the king. 
Yeah. <laughs> and then I thought, in the end, I'm just going to add on words to this sentence that he's meant to cut in on. Oh. Um, yeah. He was he was used to I directed the show and this guy is a friend of mine but he was used to being an understudy in the West End so he was that's like his bread and butter was he was an understudy so he he was used to Switching being backstage off. and reading he read books so he used to backstage. read backstage like in, in the, the wings and it was a really fast show with lo- it was like quite a, a kind of a farce the first half was a bit farcy with people running in and out and stuff happening and yeah, he was late for his cues all the time. I was a very unhappy director. But I think what was happening was he was talking to somebody outside the doors. Uh, it was a like theatre bar. Yeah. So he used to talk to the person there. <laughs> leave me stranded like an idiot. Alan was great in that. Never again. You um, you looked very pretty in that, didn't you? you I did. You wore his little corset. He was a um, Victorian, a Vic, an oppressed Victorian wife. A Carol Churchill's cloud nine. <laughs> What do you reckon my worst moment on stage is? You should know. Uh, it's my... When you slept in? Yeah. Oh, it's like an actor's nightmare. I was in uh, a musical in the West End, this was. And I was. it was a matinee, Saturday matinee. And I was at work, wasn't I? So yeah, I, I, but I was also working... I got you up. I was also working a nine-to-five job, but it wasn't nine-to-five. I had to get there at eight in the morning. And I worked through till six and then I'd go to the theatre and do this show in the evening. And um, this particular, so I'd been doing that and I was just knackered. Um, But I didn't think I'd sleep in, but I woke up and it was about half one in the afternoon. And I woke up and I had about 12 missed calls on my phone. I'd obviously slept through my alarm completely. The show was on at two, wasn't it? The show was on at two. There's no way I'd be able to make it there. So I had this like dilemma thinking, do I phone them and say I'm in A&E or something and something's going on or do I just get there and front it? And uh, I, felt, I felt so bad and I got there, got to the theatre, got in and um, I just, and I walked in in one of the scenes like halfway through and what the guy who was playing, uh, the main guy came over and went, oh, Mr. Lally, I was surprised to see you. Oh, it was horrible. It was oh. the worst th- feeling, but they all felt for me because they knew I was like, Working my ass off. It's in those other dreams, job. isn't it? Those dreams you have when you you dream that you're going on stage and you've got no pants on, or you dream that oh, you don't yeah. know your lines, or but to miss a show. To miss a show. I felt awful, but I wasn't getting paid. No, this is a this is a, a fringe company in London that got invited then to put this production on in the West End, and um, we were promised we were going to get like paid profit share, and it did didn't it get, did make didn't money. get a bean. And I had the casting director for EastEnders come to see me in it. And um, they wouldn't even give me a free ticket for the casting director of EastEnders. Da, da, da. So that's my worst moment on stage is actually kind of missing da, a performance. Da, da. Felt physically sick. Um, dream role. Dream role, if you could play anything, like regardless of age, size, Gender, what would you play? So it's like blind casting. You can play anything. Um, I, I would. Don't know. I've. I always. I always wanted to play something like Roxy Hart. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I'd like to play Roxy Hart or Velma Kelly in Chicago. Like if I could, let's say I can sing and dance. I'd love to play that. Um, I would love to have played the MC in Cabaret. I think I'd have been a really good MC in Cabaret when I was younger. Mm. So I'd love to have played that. You would have been. I would love to. Um, yeah, I guess like a, like a sexy sassy role, something like Lily um, Lily St Regis in Annie, mm. something like that. What about you? Hobson's Choice. Oh, you'd be great in Hobson's Choice. It's not even a dream role. You should play that. It will that. happen, I think. <coughs> Playing Maggie. Maggie. Maggie, I love that fit. It's what made me fall in love with Charles Lawton when I saw that. I thought, oh, what a wonderful, wonderful story! What a wonderful film! Um, Lovely. Yeah. Um, Darren Brambles says Alan is a dame with Jamie as buttons. It happened. Darren. It happened. We had such fun. We did do. We did that. Alan and was. There was yeah, there was another. There was another story on stage. Oh no! Don't let's not talk about that. No. Um, Chris, Christine Perinda says I always wanted to play a kick-ass lawyer. On stage, though, Chris, I would imagine a lawyer on stage is a bit dull. Uh, Chris earlier on, as Nibbles uh, earlier on said that um, one of his moments of of sheer sheer terror uh, was when his 
pants fell down on flat on the stage. Remember? Oh, that's what, that was in Huff Buff, I think. And they, didn't they leave him on stage with his <laughs> pants around his ankles? Yeah, because it was the curtain call and they couldn't get him off. A little bit extra for you there, audience. Darren Bramley says, how do you get round Miss Q's? And um, on the other side of the... Um, on the other side of the screen is um, our receptionist has just reminded us of in Acorn Antiques. Do I spy a new tray? <laughs> do you remember? Yes. Do you remember? It's a lovely shade of mauve. Do you remember when she doesn't come on? Yeah. And they're just on stage going, I'm sure she'll I'm be sure along in a moment. She's a professional. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> of um, course I know that I've got 30 days in the business. Bubbles would like to be in Hamilton. Gosh, I don't know. I, don't I, didn't, know you'd li- I didn't think you'd like Hamilton. I don't know Hamilton. Is that the... Um, We've never watched it. No. It's a bit kind of... I don't know if I'd like it, because it doesn't... It feels like it's too young for me. I remember, too it, old. I remember it being absolutely popular. Nobody could get tickets for it. But I like Rent, and not a lot of people like Rent, but I like Rent the Musical, which is kind of a younger person. Our little musical. Paul's writing in Baby Letters tonight. I know, he's whispering tonight, so we're missing his messages. Um, he said you were, you were chocolate buttons. Ah. Dame Thora Heard would have liked to have been Dolly Levi. But she says they gave it to Dora Bryan. I think they made the right choice, Thora. <laughs> oh, well, Thora. Um, they the brought Dora in after you'd left the flask of summer wine. Mark Mondeoman would like to have a go at Frankenfurter. I, th- I hope you mean to play the part, not just have a go at him. Um, Bethan's off. Um, Char- Come on, Bo. Shari's now shouting a la P- um, Paul and saying, I love it about Hamilton. Oh, right. I like that you burn. Have you seen it, Bubbles? Have you seen it, love? I think it's on Disney Plus. How oh, is it? There's quite a like a like a nice song sung by the three women. Quite a camp one, where one of them goes, "Analyza." I don't really know. <laughs> Bramley loves Rent. I love a bit of Rent. Alan would hate Rent. Would you? You'd hate Rent, wouldn't you? I don't know what it's about. So it's a know. musical based on La Boheme, but it's about pe- like artists, creatives who live in New York apartments and. Kind of everyone's got AIDS in it. I mean, not because of AIDS. But, but they all sing a bit about, oh, I've well, got to have my pills. Don't tell no one i got AIDS. I saw it quite like, I don't know what I like. And Blood, bro- Blood Brothers I love. He loves blo- oh, bloody bruvs. I love the soundtrack. Didn't the little advert make it look like it was going to yeah. be a really happy, yeah. funky musical? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go and get a frankfurter and a, bur- a burger. Come on. Let's get some cheesecake. Um, Lucy Braithwaite over from First Age Comics in Lancaster says, I'd forgotten about Hobson's Choice. Um, she did a scene at their acting course. My uh, my husband was Will Mossop and I was Ada Figgins. Oh, and also that film stars a very young Prunella Scales. Uh, yes, it does. Yeah. Um, Stephen Lodge says we should write. I think it was Martin Garton Spencer might have said we should write it. Who was it? Uh, it sketch. came up earlier. Martin said we should write and star in Crossroads of the Musical. Well, we did Turtle. That wasn't a musical, though, was we it? We did a film called Turtle, which was the making, uh, the the biopic of Amy Turtle. But Stephen Lodge says Jamie would play the part of Jill, singing a solo. Jesus Christ, the motel, it's on fire. Uh, we're, I, we're, I'm no afraid, one. Stephen Lodge, I would be playing Nolly. I mean, we have this little thing about Marina from Last of Wine, but he is Noel Gordon. <laughs> he is Noel Gordon. Paul, um, Paul has burst in saying, "Capitals are copyright, Paul." <laughs> To Shari, bursting in with her capicals. Andrew Jones. I saw Jason uh, Donovan in Priscilla, um, fancying himself. Jason Darcy did Hobson Choice at school. I was Willie. Of course you were, darling. Do you remember that other play about um, a sort of Lancashire family? Um, and the um, woman... The, 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 the spring port wine? <laughs> yeah, the woman gets fed like fish and mashed tattoos every it. night. <laughs> and he's like, that I'm going to feed... I'll feed you that every bloody night. That woman is what called challenges. <laughs> Hannah... <laughs> What's her name? Hannah what's her face? <laughs> Richard Richard Wilson killer Hannah Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> and I James Mason. Is it James Mason That's the dad? dad? Yeah. Spring and Port Wine. What a, I was meant to be in that with for the Formby Theatre Company. Were you? Yeah. Formby Theatre Company. Formby's a very small town, but Theatre Company thinks it's like tip top. Um was presided over by this grand dame of theatre called Gwen Story, who was um she was like a counsellor or something, or like the mayor, the mayor's wife, maybe. She would often wear white gloves when they weren't necessary. So she'd always be in little white gloves and made up. She wrote like a page in the Formby Times, which was called like Gwen's Art Diary. And it was very kind of 
white gloves. Mm. Anyway, she headhunted me because she saw me at uh, school in productions and thought I was brilliant. So headhunted me to be part of the um, Formby Theatre Company. So you have been headhunted. <laughs> so your, in... your dad says, um, do you remember um, you seeing Gypsy with free tickets? Mum says, do you remember us seeing Gypsy oh, with free tickets? Yeah. yeah. I won. I, they were tickets I won in Formby Times, most probably in Gwen Story's art diary. And... Um, yeah, we went to see it. It was brilliant. I love. Now Gypsy. that's good casting. You'd be good as Mama Rose in Gypsy. You'd be a great Mama Rose. What in drag? Yeah, no. As if you were a woman's. Um, Lady V and Neil were in Obson's Choice. She was one of the sisters. I can really see Lady V being in Obson's Choice, and um, Neil was the solicitor. He fiance. said he was the solicitor f- fiance, and he was sulking because he wanted to play Whale Moss up. Oh. Um, Steam Rock says my dream role is low. Bosworth in Heidi, the Hills musical. Heidi, Hill. Heidi as in Heidi, w- with Clara, and <laughs> Peter the Peter the Goat Boy. <laughs> I think he's talking about. There's an American reality show called The Hills that I wouldn't know about. But I think there's um, Nibbles and Bubbles. We enjoyed Tick Tick Boom, the movie about Jonathan Larson who created Rent with Andrew Garfield. So that was on in London at a theatre called the Meniere Chocolate Factory, which is a great little theatre. He didn't like it because they, they don't number their seats. Um, but, but me and my friend Kirsty wanted to go and see it and it was sold out. So we told them, because we kind of knew what the show was about, that we, <laughs> that we owned the keyboard that the main actor was playing in the show. <laughs> we, got, we got tickets in there. And it was um, Neil Patrick Harris, Doogie Howser was the main actor and we we pretended that it was our keyboard that was in the show that's good and that we'd been promised really, I believe that that we'd been promised tickets and I they should have been that. left beside for us um so yeah I love tick tick boom Alan would again hate tick tick boom um Bramley Priscilla's a favourite I love Priscilla the film I love Priscilla the film we love mm, that don't yeah. we yeah we love Tu Wong Fu the film as well and that's just become a musical um Alex Johnson says, no, we should do Brookside the musical. And um, we're watching it on TV and Julia's just come into it and we could do Let Them Know. <laughs> Ice cream in May. We're thinking of recreating the <laughs> Let Them Know video and it'll be such a sort of bleak hit that no one will watch, but all of you will watch it and love it. Um, See, that's the good thing about doing what we do. We can do anything we want. Charlie says I'm such a blagger, getting them tickets. We got all, we got all sorts oh, we of tickets. Should, should hear what we did when we went to New York. We went to New York and uh, about met, yeah. two months before we were skinned. We were on the bones of our arse then, weren't we? Yeah, we were meant to stay with your brother, weren't we? Yeah, and my brother's wife got, got Ill, ill. So they couldn't have American health care because it was rubbish. So they came back to England. So our budget went on booking a... B&B room. Booking a and b and we got it from some gay ballroom dancers. Lovely. It was, <laughs> but all our money went on that. So we wrote to all Broadway theatres and um, I wrote from, like, I set up a, this is back in the day when it, email was quite early on. So I set up a Yahoo mail account, I think. And um, I wrote about that I was a um, press, I was a journalist um, for um, the gay press in England and I wanted to do something about the Pink Pound uh, in America and how um, you could go for a weekend and see everything and do, and do everything. And do Christmas shopping. And do Christmas shopping. And um, I said, we'd just love to see some of the shows and see what's out there and be able to review things. And we got press tickets for every kind of show. You see, we knew this would happen because we worked at the box office at the Royal Festival Hall. And when we were working behind the counter and people say, I'm here to collect tickets. You just give me that. Yeah, we knew that the people... You don't ask for press... People at the box office would never question it. It would only be the press agents who would question it and then if they agree to it... Yeah. All the tickets get sent down and if they're in a collection box, you know full well it's been cleared by somebody above you so you're not going to start asking for ID and proof. But press gets like the best seats in the house. So we went to the Avenue Q, we went to see the producers... We oh, went to see. Oh, we went to see Forbidden Broadway. Forbidden Broadway. We went to. We were going to go and see a Judy Garland tribute act, a drag act, but we didn't go and see that because we were we too knackered. Or some, Tina and Gina's we were like wedding. turning things down. Tony and Gina's wedding. Yeah, we went to see all sorts. The, the, what, the school reunion one. Did we see Wicked? Wicked. No, your brother kindly. Oh, we went to Wicked that. in the West End. Once but yeah, so we blagged. We blagged the crap out of that trip to um, New York. 
But we were very poor. We had no money. It's not naughty because the seats would be empty anyway. Uh, <laughs> and we did in fact write articles, didn't we? Uh, let's have a look. Um, Archie Diggins. I'd have loved to have seen Dame Angela Lansbury in Blythe Spirit, but it would have cost an absolute fortune to get to London. And what if it had been the understudy? I would have been devastated. Oh, that oh no. Happened. We used to do this wonderful charity thing where um, unused seats go to this charity and we and we donate, didn't we? It was like 50, yeah, 50p, £1 a ticket or something. It's, yeah. called, it's to pay for the house rather than charity. Um, and so we'd go and see lots of... Um, Musicals and plays, and everything, and then after, usually matinees, weren't they? In the weekend, weekday, and then you'd sort of um, you'd go into the audience, go, and you'd hear the announcement say, it's like today's part of blah blah will be paid by understudy, and you'd, you'd hear the audience go, Ooh. oh yeah, and you'd think, oh if that understudy's backstage hearing this, we had loads of friends who were understudies, and they yeah, you could hear the kind of dread the audience go, oh. Like, because they were all, you know, if you paid to go and see Sheridan Smith in something and she's not You want to see on, Sheridan Smith. Or Martine, do you remember when Martine McCutcheon was in My Fair Lady? Mm. And she did she hardly did any performances. Well, didn't Sheridan Smith do that as well? Sheridan Smith, yeah, for Funny Girl, I think was off for a lot. But Sheridan Smith was more of a kind of breakdown, wasn't she? Yeah. Um, Louise Dudman. Hello, Hello darling. Louise Dudman's been um, in Whitby today with um, our friend Martin. Whitby. Drinking cocky teas. And um, she's taken our little badges about. So Grot Drags has been in um, Whitby today. She says, a few years ago, I worked backstage at the Grand Opera House in York on Priscilla. It was so much fun. We used to dress up in the costumes when we had undressed the actors. Also saw it on Broadway too. Epic film and show. Um, BG Bear, I saw Wicked, Avenue Q and Hairspray in the West End. But we get great touring shows in Sunderland and Newcastle. Oh, we saw Avenue Q as well, yeah. didn't we? Oh, yeah, Avenue Q we saw in Broadway. That was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. That was so funny. I loved that show. And we saw it in London, didn't we? We came to London. Uh, Filippo Jacques Fortinbras has appeared. He's been drawing nude people today. I think life model rather than just going out and drawing people nude. And he says he went down to that there London to see my mate Carly in Shrek. The day I got there, her and Farquhar both went down with mumps. Oh. Oh. Martin Garten Spence, your views on Gemma Collins in Chicago. I think we discussed this. I think did we she actually do it? it? I don't think she did it, did she? No, I don't think she did, did um, she? It's, uh, I guess, my views on it, it, it gets people in to see yeah, something. Yeah, they do this, so don't they? it fills they? the theatre, yeah. which means that all those other people who are in it, that show happens because of someone like that. But I would rather it was someone who could sing you know what i mean i know she she can kind of sing but i don't know Gemma collins background but wouldn't most people go i want to i want to see her in it yeah i want to see if she can so it's going to sell it so uh, it's called stunt casting um they did it they started doing it with the vagina monologues i think in yeah. london do you remember that was always like the cast would change all the time and it was stunt casting like get whoever's in heat magazine get them in it um but yeah, I don't know. I, I guess there is an actor who's losing out on a job, but then there's all those other actors who are getting jobs in something because there's someone like that in it. Because Chicago's been on for such a long time that would people still go and see it if someone like that wasn't in it? Well, they used to... Um, didn't they used to change the Billy Flynn character? Yeah. and j- the same, uh, same reason. Even back in the West End, when we lived in London, like Gabby Roslin was in Chicago playing Mama Mort. And people like... It was... It was a it was, and Alison Moyet. It was all people who weren't traditionally musical theatre. I think if Grot Bags was still around, I think she might have been. Oh, to be Grot Bags it. would have been ace, wouldn't she? Carol Lee Scott. She'd be great. Mama Morton. I'm not. Um, I'm not joking. Martin says he thinks that the GC pulled out. Gemma Collins pulled out, um, and it was Sheila Ferguson the week before her. Oh, Sheila Ferguson would be good, eh? Yeah. Um, Philip Jack says I saw Marty Pello in Witches of Eastwick and Chicago, and then he says meh. Meh. Um, Michelle Visage was in Everyone's Talking About Jamie yeah. says Steam Rocks so yeah it's a bit sort of like stunt casting but it gets people along to see it Bianca Del Rio being in that as well mm. it's like you know that does mean an actor loses their job but no one really moaned about Bianca Del Rio being in it but I think because Gemma Collins is such a kind of divisive person mm. she got a lot of hate where but also, same doesn't it bring people of a certain age into the theatre? I think so. Because Gemma Collins is part of that whole reality show. Yeah. You know, and there's such a big following. Uh, Martin says Grot Bags would be in Wicked as Madame Morrible. She would. Yeah. She would, you're right. Yeah. She'd be ace. Um, 
we are at the end, aren't we? It's 20 past nine, people. Um, let's have a little sing-song finale, and then we'll be back for a 10 minutes or so wrap-up. Um, a wrap-up chat. But yeah, it's the end. If you want to go, go. We're going to try and create some little video um, in the next few days so there's something new popping up. We're doing our photos for the next live shows so I think this weekend. On a Good Friday, we're going to be actually in Christmas outfits. <laughs> Would you believe? Yeah, so fingers crossed they'll all be announced soon. But the dates, yeah, yeah the dates should be announced very soon so you can get booking um, soon for those. Um Elaine Pepper Rogers just popped in and said, Hi, Alan and Jamie. Hope you're both okay. We are, but we're just about to go, Elaine. Um, so, thank you for hanging out with us on Wednesday. We'll be back next Wednesday, won't we? Yeah, you're still here. I'm still you? here. You're still here. I'm here for a few weeks, I think. Um, I hope you all have, all have a lovely Easter weekend. Um, some of you might have Friday off. Some of you might not. I don't know. But Friday to Monday, isn't it? Usually, Easter holiday is quite long, isn't it? Yeah, you get fr- good Friday off and Easter Monday, some I think. Some people don't get good Friday off. Um... Have a nice time, everybody. We'll see you after this song if you're going to hang out. Bye. Bye, darlings. We got milkshakes, fizzy and frothy. And we'll make any flavor you choose. table or you can take it away make a buck of glory three feet high chocolate sunday is my own oh mind we're not gonna worry about the flavor you buy because you like it we're always busy down in the kitchen no time to play there's always We work all day Cooking for you Oh dear, we weren't fast enough, were we? No, you weren't, George. What you all need is some practice. Oh, rainbow. <laughs> uh, Neil Sandler says, the, the, a musical thruple. That was, of course, Rod, Jane and Freddie with Milkshake <laughs> from Rainbow. Ma, 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 milkshake. Um, yeah, that's... That, Diner would soon be closed down because bung, Bungle should really be in a body net. <laughs> Alan said Bungle should be in like a full net to catch any of those stray hairs. And yeah, and Zippy and George were in no productive outfit either, were they? No, they were, they were little things on the way to things, didn't they? Yeah, but not when they were serving. That cheese went on the floor. Yeah, I bet, I know, I bet they picked that up and put it back in the burger, burger bowl. Um, Andrew Jones and Martin Gartenspenth both said it's not milkshake, that's Pepto-Bismol. Um... <laughs> Jason says the boys love Jane's bad. <laughs> and the other Jason says the boys lo- Jane loved the boys' cheese. Oh. And Martin Garten Spence said, wow, that's harmonies that, S- o- that Scylla could only dream of. Again, it was Scylla. like Grotbags, wasn't it? They're, 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 let's sing our own songs. <laughs> let's, let's get an album. <laughs> Grotbags didn't sing her own songs, though. She did covers. Yeah, I know, but... I think Rod Jane... Can you imagine Rod Jane and Freddie all sat round at the house, like, writing that? Yeah. We got milkshake... <laughs> And Jane going, I could have a tap solo. But she wasn't wearing tap shoes. She was wearing ballroom dancing shoes. Tracy says Jane's milkshake brought the boys to the yard. Did. Um, 
Uh, Darren Brambles, uh, BG Bear is requesting that you do a program that he can be awake for rather than Good Morning Britain. He says he's back on Good Morning Britain next week. Um, yeah, it's Ed Balls nice, Darren. I would imagine Ed Balls is lovely. Let us know if Ed Balls is nice. You won't be able to let us know if he's horrible. Um, Chris Perinder says, I never realised as a kid that George and Zippy only had one arm. Of course they did, because the we've other arm's there. Yeah, we've had this contest before, haven't we? Yeah. They only have three fingers. Have you... <laughs> Chris, have you ever looked up <laughs> Zippy's cousin, Zippo? Um, you must look up Zippo. Zippo's cool, Zippo's like a beatnik, and Zippo talks like that. I didn't like it when they did all this, like, spin-off characters, like um, <laughs> when um, Scooby-Doo had the other Scrappy-Doo. Scrappy-Doo. And then um, Sooty and Sweep had a... Scamp. Scamp. <laughs> No, leave it. <laughs> Zippo's only in for one episode, and it's about like when because everyone likes Zippo more than Zippy, so Zippy gets sad. So oh. it's to teach, like, to learn a lesson. Okay. <laughs> there was a reason behind it. Alex Johnson says, "If we did a Brookie vid, what era would we do? Oh, if we did, actually did a Brookie video, we'd do the eighties, wouldn't we? Mm. Uh, so we do like Sheila Grant and the Grant children. Oh, we have to have, I want to be um, Julia. Julia Brogan." Um, we do, yeah, we do up to the kind of Trevor Jordash years, wouldn't we? Mm. I don't think we do any further than that because we don't really remember it that much after that. Um, Ed is nice. Ed Balls is nice and he loves it when we take cake in. Oh, Dale Ibbotson's just said, good evening. I got here around a quarter to. <laughs> good Ooh, evening, Dale. Are you busy, Dale? Getting ready for your panto. Dale, you've missed a cracking one tonight because it was um, theatre tonight tonight and we were showing pictures of everyone in th- old theatre performances and you and Caroline would have had some great photos to share. And Dale's about to be Tim Man, isn't he? Dale is being Tim Man. No, I think it's later in the year. Oh, is it? I think it's in like... Um... Yeah, I'm sure he's doing an Easter panto, isn't he? Yeah, he's doing something at the moment, I think. Is it still... Um... Old King Coles. Yes, and and uh, I think Wizard of Oz is is mostly autumn half term. I think Paul McFarlane says, "Guess who's coming back to Scarborough?" Paul. Paul, yourself, and Diangela. Are you coming to see us in June? The next uh, the next sh- show is June thirtieth. I think I've got that date right, Paul. Which is yeah. Sunday, June thirtieth. But it's not announced yet. It's like we've signed contracts and stuff. But it's not announced yet. So don't book anything until it's announced. Just in case something happens. Lucy Braithwaite says, Oh, but I do love Ramsbottom the Snake on Sooty. Oh, that must be a new thing. I Lucy, don't remember. I don't we don't any, know Ramsbottom the Snake. I don't remember snake. any snakes. Uh, Philippe Jack says, I'm gutted I missed the theatre stuff. You can always watch it on catch up, Filippo. Uh, Christopher Printer says, Does Zippo catch fire? <laughs> Chris. Oh, you. He's can like you, Paul McFarlane. Can you, imagine how, can you imagine how hideous that episode would be? <laughs> Poor I, Zippo catching I fire. I bet, I bet they, they had to be Scotch guarded. Because they'd go up, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah. I bet, yeah, because they were always. I bet Jane was always sigging around them. Do you reckon? Yeah. She was all, what, do you reckon she smoked? Like them Vogue cigarettes. Catch some full strength. No, do you remember them Vogue cigarettes that are like pink? Oh, the little, yeah. The little they were like pastel, pastel ones. ones. I bet she smoked And I bet that. she dropped a bit of hot fag ash on Bungle's fur. Yeah. <laughs> Dale says he's in red car, but I know it's not pronounced Redka. that. Redka. Redka. Um, rehearsing Humpty Dumpty for Easter and The Wizard of Oz is October. Um, oh, Paul, that'd be great to see you again. And Diangela. And I think we've got Corals coming for that one as well. And I think, and I think Jason Darcy. And Jason Darcy and the Welsh boys and Jason Rigby. So it'll be, um, yeah, you'll all have to get in early. We'll make sure we get an early slot for you to book, all of you guys. And I think Nibbles and Bubbles are going to be there this time as well. Because uh, they weren't going to be able to be there, but I think they are now. So, yeah. Uh, Dale Liberson, I was dressed as both Dame and Tin Man for photos yesterday. Oh, so you're doing Dame this Christmas, Dale. That's good news. She was ugly sister last year, are you da- Are you solo Dame or are you ugly sister again? Um, Andrew Jones is saying three fingers and one arm is enough, surely. Mm. My mum and dad are watching Andrew. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, Bubbles says, hello, Dale. I was waiting for your pics in the th- theatre pics. Yeah. Oh, we just send loads in, wouldn't we? And uh, Filippo and Carlos Bob and Stuffer might be there as well. Oh, and BG June. Bear. And BG Bear. So it's going to be a right wig and sling battles. 
Wiggins the Matt Royalty. Yeah, so we're going to do something on the Sunday night, but we're not going to do the uh, House of S and M uh, again because it was so exhausting for the boys who'd been up since early doors setting up the theatre, and then that it was exhausting for us because like we were kind of had to, to sort of organise that. So we're going to just be in, I think, Weatherspoons afterwards, aren't we? Yeah, because it's normally quiet in there yeah. on Sunday. So we'll do a Weatherspoons um... afterwards. It's open till like midnight, I think, on a Sunday. Uh, so we'll do Weatherspoons afterwards for everyone. Saturday night, I don't know. I spoke about karaoke rooms, but I think it would be... Um... The problem with karaoke rooms is really expensive and it's like yeah. 15 quid each. Yeah, no, let's and not do And we'll that. end up seeing one song each. And it, nah. no, it's not fair. But we want to hear a tall Alex Clark sing. Karaoke. Yeah. We'll look for something to do on Saturday night. It is Armed Forces weekend in Scarborough that weekend. Jason's. The Armed Forces <laughs> yeah. weekend. Um, so they'll be, it'll be busy. Town will be busy. But I think by Sunday night, it should be quite quiet. Saturday night will be busy. So I don't know what we'll do on Saturday night, but we might do something. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, we don't like to do anything big on Saturday night because we've got to do that show the next day. So we just need to be on our besties. Getting our dresses ready, aren't we? We're getting our costumes and characters ready for all these new shows. Um, So yeah, stuff's happening. So we like each show to be different. D'Angelo says, one big party. Yeah, it'd be nice. And Jason Darcy says, oh, I say about Armed Forces weekend. Martin Garton Spence says, we really hope we can make it. Oh, it'd be lovely if you could, Martin, from Aberdeen. But we know that's a massively long way. So we totally understand if you can't. We, um... Um, Sharon, you can drink. Philippe said, Sharon says she'll come, but she won't drink. You can drink, Sharon. You were lovely. You can drink, just don't drink as much. <laughs> Just it was lovely seeing you. The cocktails, the cocktails are killers. They're so they're like full of booze. Um, oh, it'd be lovely to see everyone then. So that's something to, for us to look forward to. Yeah, because I love seeing you all. We get so giddy and touched that you got come all this way to see us, and it's just lovely to spend time with you all. Yeah, and even though we're a little bit tired afterwards. Um, but um, he yeah. won't he won't be green this time, so we'll be able to go to. Weatherspoons. You couldn't do it after, Not after the Halloween, Halloween one. one. No. We did though, didn't we? We went there, but we were just knackered. We were cream crackered. Um, um, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely go out after us. I'm not going to not go out and see you all. Bloody hell. No, we we'll definitely do something. Definitely do something. We'll maybe do something on Saturday night, but not a riotous thing. We'll have a think about what we could do. Yeah, we'll see what options we have. But it was busy weekend. Busy weekend. I don't know if anything's on at the open air theatre. There might even be a band on. So you don't want to see a band. Talk no, about I'm not saying. I'm saying like that's why, like book your accommodation asset. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. I'm saying don't book anything because of the um, because of the not being announced. But it's pretty. I mean, it's like 98 percent sure it's going to go ahead because mm. it's in our diaries and we've signed contracts. Is there a theme? Says Nibbles and Bubbles. Yes, it's going to be a holiday special. So it's um. Come for a holiday. So you could come in uh, red coat outfits, or you could come as holiday makers, or you could come as we're, tour guides. We're thinking or Hawaiian shirts, pilots, lays. Yeah, Hawaiian outfits, mankinis. <laughs> no mankinis. Um. But yeah, it's holiday. It's the holiday special. So come as a character from Carry On Abroad. Um, but it's going to be that. Then we've got the Halloween one. Then we'll have a Christmas one. Then we'll have a Valentine's one. But yeah, so the, um, the the summer one's going to be the holiday special. And you'd be pleased to know that um, Dame Valerie Cartwheel is coming back for the February one next year. Yes. Coral says, while we are there, so Coral's already booked and Mark and Alex have already booked. So book your, book your hotel if you want to come. So you've got the Premier Inn in town, the Premier Inn just outside of town, which is still kind of get toable. Travel Lodge right in the middle of town. The Royal Hotel and the Grand Hotel in town. They're kind of your nice budgety versions. Bike and boot is lovely, but it's more expensive. And there's so many like Airbnbs and B&Bs around. But um, yeah, start looking now. Coral says, while we are there, it will be her (coughs) 65th birthday. (gasps) No. Coral, don't tell us that. Sherry Stump will have you up and get everyone singing to you. No, I wouldn't do that to you, Coral. I know you... I'm not sure you'd like that. 
She won't. No, I wouldn't do that to you. Um, Martin Garten turns best. How about he comes as Deirdre from Corrie when she worked for Sunseekers Travel Agency? Oh, amazing. That, that would the be thinking. the detail that we that's would... That's the thinking. That would, be, that would be the detail that would win awards at Martin. Um, and then the Halloween one, again. I mean, last year, they were so wonderful, the costumes, weren't they? People dressing up. Yeah, and yeah. That, we're doing that again. Yeah. If you can dress up. We'll do a Halloween special again. And we'll do... Um, Christmas one, that'll be Christmassy themed. That'll be about mid-December, won't it, that? <laughs> Mark says, all oh, the travel lodge, we had to buy air fresheners. J- um, Jason Darcy had a nice room in the travel lodge. but she, I had, she had the penthouse? Travel lodge is a bit hit and miss, but it's, what, depends it's what room 29 there. quid or something. Uh, Premier Inn is, um, I think, is nicer, but it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, re- receptions come through saying he, he thinks you'll find it was Sunliners that Deirdre worked for, not Sunseekers. She's busy. We work her hard. We work her too hard. But she's always there. She's always on... I do this because I think she's got a Rolodex yeah. rather than a computer. I yeah. think she has everything on Rolodex. And she's one of those that spins around as well. You th- she's like Ghostbusters, isn't yeah. she? Ghostbusters! Isolation Creations! <laughs> Paul McFarlane will sing for Coral. He'll sing Happy Birthday. Oh yeah, we'll do something private for Cobb. I'm not going to make a, make a, you know, I'm not going to embarrass her on, on the day of the bingo. Uh, Tracy Thirty would like to remind us all. And Tracy Thirty, you shouldn't need to remind because we're the English one, the British ones. That the clocks change this weekend. Yeah. Um, which way do they go? They go spring forward, <laughs> fall back. So we lose an hour. Yeah. Um, so this is like it, not turn back time with share. This is share. Believing in love. <laughs> Believing in life and after. All those years I used to work weekends. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to lose an hour. I'm going to have to go to bed earlier. Uh, Neil Sandwell has booked. They're in a flat with a lift. Good. Yeah, um, BG yeah. Bear says his Speedos won't fit, so we won't be in Speedos. Oh, it would be nice to see everyone. I'm excited about that. Uh, Nigel TC says, everyone who stayed at the Travel Lodge is popping their reviews in now. Nigel says, our room at the Travel Lodge was on a slope. <laughs> we woke up on the other side of the room. They did, because they rolled out of bed. <laughs> Little bed slipping down like that. <laughs> the Travel Lodge is, yeah. It's a, oh, the stories we've heard about that Travel yeah. Lodge. But over the road, you've got the Grand Hotel, which you can get rooms without a view. You can get rooms with no window, which is cheap. But they're, you know... And when you get a room with a window, they're usually filthy. I think the the, the Grand Hotel... I stayed at the Grand Hotel when I first came to Scarborough. I would stay there again because it's so cheap, but mm. it wasn't. it's not a nice room at all. Um, but people liked it. Oh, your friend Claire loved it, didn't she? She had a nice room there. Well, yeah, it's sitting miss, isn't it? What room you get. Carlos Bobbins Duffer, Gad About Dad, uh, says our travel lodge room was great and he's actually done a vlog on the Scarborough travel log. Oh yeah, because we, we published that this week, didn't we? And uh, Well, he published his first, then we... Reception says it. that she um, stays at the bike and boot, but she does it, she sends us the receipts. Should we get the bill? <laughs> but she says um, she got an upgrade when she returned in October. The bike and, well, boot, the bike and boot's lovely. We, we put, had a word with, with them, didn't we? Yeah. Right, Ross is getting off work. He's he, oh, he says it's hard to get off time, get time off work at the moment. Oh. Um, we do so many shows. Well, we do three, three or four a year. So Philippe says uh, the travel lodge was not bad for twenty five quid, but they want a hundred quid this time. Oh no! Ooh, don't stay for a hundred. That's cheeky. Have a um, have a look for cheaper it elsewhere. Might be summer, isn't it? Yeah, the Royal's nice. The Royal Hotel. Most of the places will be nice, but see, I think it's because it's this um, armed forces weekend, so it might be sat- Saturday night might be expensive. Sunday night not, might not be expensive, mm. so maybe come up, drive up on the Sunday. That's why the people at work in the next day, isn't it? Yeah, Alex Clark, have you got home yet? Or are you still at work? He said his it? outfit's ready. I know, but I'm worried that I hope they're wearing yellow coats. Oh, can you imagine if Alex comes as Peggy? Boys in Welsh. They'll be like the Web Twins. Yeah. <laughs> All right, darlings. Should we say good night to everyone? Yeah, good night, my darlings. Have a lovely Easter weekend. I'll be getting up some nice chocolate eggs. I don't know what we can end on. Well, should we end up on, with um, a bit of Sue Pollard? Sue Pollard or, or, Ju- Scylla? or Julia Brogan? We did Julia Brogan last week. I don't think I've got Scylla. Let me have a look what I've got. We've got that Scylla, but it's a bit... I think we'll get caught for that Scylla. Oh, yeah. 
In 20 minutes, Andy Crane will be here with birthday greetings and programme news in Children's BBC. Before that, Henry Kelly puts the questions to those going for gold. Let's welcome your host, Henry... Oh, not that. Not that, but we just wanted to watch it anyway. <laughs> I didn't know I had that on a button. Um, we'll leave you with a bit of Sue Pollard singing to a church full of clowns. Um, it's been lovely hanging out with you tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, Lots of love. See you soon. See you next week. Bye. Bye.